We are going to talk meal planning and freezer cooking. It's always a fun one because it's really something that I think we all long to do a little bit better. So as we dive in tonight, I'm fine with questions that are off topic as well. If you'll leave your questions in the comments and I will see them, my husband will see them, and between the two of us, hopefully I will get you an answer. Um, but we can go wherever you want to go question-wise too, but I always love to discuss meal planning and freezer cooking and to hear your, your ideas too. So if you've got some tips to throw in as we're talking about various things, please feel free because it's definitely one where... I mean, I think even someone who runs a meal planning business can still learn from other folks. We can all do this a little bit better. Honestly, in terms of meal planning, this may not be your cup of tea. And for me, for years, it wasn't. I used to even like get up in front of workshops and tell folks, you know what, I don't meal plan now. We do meal plan now. But years ago for us, it, it wouldn't work because I would sit there and I'd make a list of, okay, this is what we're going to eat for dinner this week. And when it came time to that day, that like totally wasn't what we wanted. And we would look at the menu and be like, meh, let's just do something else. Um, so what we did to start was really just, I would map out maybe seven meals. I wouldn't assign them to a day. This was like our, you know, getting our feet wet into meal planning when we um, started a few years back. Wouldn't assign them a day. And that way, rather than saying like on Wednesday, you're gonna eat such and such, um, it, it was just a list of meals and I knew that I had the ingredients for those meals because that is what is really saving you money is it's stopping you from having that we have to go to the store right now. We don't have the ingredients to make what we need to make or you, you, you know that you end up making these runs. And so for, for us, what kind of pushed us into meal planning mode really was moving to the country because running to the store, it's a really long run in. We're not doing that. You are going to learn to cook from what you have or you're not going to eat that. That is definitely what started it. Um, but the more that we started to do it, the more we really loved it because it's taking off the stress of what in the world are we going to eat for dinner tonight? We don't have to think about it. That has been decided. So, um, you know, start small. If that's what you want to do, just map out a week's worth of meals and don't assign them to a day. If the day stresses you out, if feeling stuck in a rut stresses you out, don't go there. Just a list of five or six meals. Now, let's step back even there. In terms of getting started, you're willing to jump in if you've never meal planned. Odds are you already have, I'd say about 10 things that your family rotates through that you, you enjoy. There are meals you know your kids are gonna eat, meals that you tend to actually keep on hand. You have the ingredients to make. So start, step one, just make a list of what those meals are. Just like brainstorm, basically, those 10 things that you regularly cook. And you'll realize right there, that's over a week's worth of meals. But let's just map it out. If I were to take those 10 meals and let's just plan on eating them, eat, eating each meal twice during the month to start us out. So now we're at 20 meals already. I need 10 more. Um, and a great way to do that is let's throw in a leftover night here and there if, we're, if we were going for the whole month. And then maybe a new meal once a week. You don't really want to add more than one new recipe a week. Not only do they take more time, you don't know how, you're, how, how it works. you got to stop and read every instruction. But they also tend to not take things that you have on hand. So it's going to cost a little bit more as you're starting out with new, ing new ingredients and new recipes. You don't want to throw that on yourself every single night that we're making something different. Unless you are just like, we have to throw caution to the wind and we need to go crazy, you know, go for it. But for most of us, that is not a good way to get started. We want to start kind of small uh, with the meals that we love and then rotating in a few new ones and rotating in uh, leftover night. It's totally on the meal plan, needs to be there. You may even find for you, and this is us too, uh, right next to leftover night, this is a standing night, is we tend to have pizza night on Friday, uh, whether that is DiGiorno, it was DiGiorno this week, um, or whether it's make your own pizza, um, you know, you can rotate those around. You may have other nights that are just classic soup nights for you. You know, it's just you sitting down and brainstorming for a minute to figure out what are our routines because you may not realize it, um, but you have routines. We all have routines. So it's just kind of getting them out 
on paper to figure out what that routine looks like. You may not have thought about it, but you have them. So let's start there, figure that out. Now, assigning days. So I told you, you know, if you're just getting started and mapping out a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, assigning days does sound stressful, but that is another piece to meal planning. Because if your kids are doing sports and activities, um, you know, Jessica saying I'm trying to start for a family of seven with two toddlers, you know, trying to jump in and get started with a big family, you need to meal plan. But trying to get started with a big family, I have to take into account the activities for the week. Because if I'm planning a meal that's going to take me 45 minutes, 50 minutes, which that's big in our house, um, that is not going to be a good night for Monday night. Monday night for us, not only am I here with you guys, but it is a stressful night because we are pulling in after American Heritage Girls. Uh, my big girls actually make sandwiches and we eat them in the car on the way home from American Heritage Girls so that we can walk in the door and everyone can go to bed. Um, it's, it's pretty sweet. I have no complaints there. But I am not going to plan a big meal that night. So assigning days became, we started with our list, not assigned, and then started to realize, you know what? This is just going to be easier if we do. We realize now, hey, Monday you've got soccer and Tuesday you've got this, to just go ahead and assign the meals that are going to work great on those busy nights. Because if you don't, those busy nights, they end up in McDonald's or Wendy's or, you know, whatever's nearby. So thinking ahead means that we can have sandwiches in the car ready to go, that we are all eating our dinner as we drive home from American Heritage Girls instead of hitting the McDonald's or something like that. Because... Something about being a parent, you got to feed them. I don't know. Um, you're not allowed to skip that step. Turns out you have to feed your children. Um, so if you plan it out ahead of time, it makes it a little easier. Um, so good to see everybody jumping in too. Um, I, I like that. I'm finally here. That's great. Uh, and lots of books from all over the place tonight. So uh, I'm curious as, as you're di diving in or joining in, how many of you guys are already meal planning? I know I'm seeing like Natalie saying excited to try meal prepping, never done it. Um, so Natalie, we'll go there. Let's talk meal prepping and freezer cooking tonight too. Um, and if you have been doing this for a while, you know, would love to see your comments as to, in terms of what is working for you or not working for you. So for freezer cooking and meal planning, freezer cooking for me is us looking at some classic meals that we make on a regular basis. This is a great way to start anyway, looking at classic meals that you make and making an extra every time that you make them. So for example, chicken enchiladas, we had that for dinner the other night. Instead of making one pan's worth of chicken enchiladas, making two. Um, you're not going to bake the second pan. You're just going to cover it in tin foil and stick it in the freezer. When it is time to cook it, you're going to pull it out. Add, throw some extra cheese on the top and stick it in the oven. I mean, I would recommend thawing it, but you get the idea. I already did all the prep work. You've already made the kitchen dirty to make one pan, so why not? go ahead and just double the recipe. That's the best simple way to get started on freezer cooking because now we've got one meal in and then maybe another meal this week. You realize, hey, I could double that one and we could freeze it. Lasagna, um, any kind of pasta if you want to just, let's say you're going to have spaghetti tonight, just plain old spaghetti. We don't need to freeze spaghetti, but you could always double your sauce and freeze the extra sauce. Uh, I know for those of you, I, uh, Jessica, who was talking about being a family of seven, and sometimes doubling the recipe for a family of seven means, woo, we just got out a lot of jars of pasta sauce. But it really is. You already took the time to brown the hamburger, so let's just brown two pounds instead of browning one and open you know, three jars of pasta sauce. Um, big families know how to stretch things, so we're adding canned tomatoes to our pasta sauce to stretch that and make it go further. But now you've got a double batch, and that's really easy to freeze. So you may not realize the meal that you're making would work, but it, and it may not be the whole meal, but just a piece of it, like your spaghetti sauce. Or um, if I'm going to do chicken, I can even have chicken um, pre-prepared. So as you're talking meal prepping and wanting to learn about meal prepping, that is one of our go-tos. Now, I don't have this in a freezer bag, um, but this, you can barely tell what it is now. It needs to get eaten. It's um, on its last leg, but this is shredded chicken. It's already cooked. It's ready to go. It lives in the inside freezer so that when we're ready to make uh, chicken pot pie or chicken enchiladas or whatever it might be, this just needs to be thawed, add some seasoning, and you're set. You have a meal ready to go. Um, so, 
that's really when it comes down to freezer prepping is thinking about what ingredients take you time. Chopping onions, chopping peppers, having those things chopped and ready to go in freezers at block bags in the freezer so that I am good to throw a meal together. If you're going to brown hamburger, always browning extra and putting that in the freezer. If we're going to cook bacon, uh, and we have eggs coming in all the time from our chickens in the yard, so breakfast uh, is is a normal on our meal plan. Um, but if we're going to brown bacon, we're browning you know more than a pound every time that we're doing it. The extra is getting put in the freezer, cooked and ready to go. I can't tell you how many times we'll have soup, and that's perfect to throw in on a you know corn and potato chowder soup or even goes in Zupa Toscana soup, you know, whatever one you're making, you already have pre-cooked bacon is pretty sweet because you cooked extra, your pan was already dirty. So that's where your brain needs to start thinking is how can I help myself tomorrow with my already dirty pan today? Um, and that's where freezer prepping comes in. Now, freezer prepping is also going to help you because it, for, for us, we're grabbing our produce in bulk, um, being part of a produce co-op. But it means that sometimes I have a ton of onions um, because we our co-op meets every other week, basically. It's the first and third Saturday. But doing that means I've got, you know, two three-pound bags of onions now because I didn't use them all up last time. And then it's co-op week. Well, go ahead and just have onion chopping party and get them all chopped and get them all put in the freezer so that they're not going to go bad. I am not going to have to worry about using them in time. They're already put up. Um, and so on that note, this one is put up correctly. These are green beans. Um, have them snapped, have them ready to go and vacuum seal them. Look at how much prettier that is, by the way, guys. I'm always mentioning this. Um, this guy, only good for six weeks. So if you're gonna stick something in the freezer, a Ziploc bag is good for six weeks or less. If you put it in too long, you end up with this. This has been in there too long. I'm showing you, I mean, it's like I'm showing you the inside of my closet almost. Um, six weeks or less because a Ziploc bag does not take out the air. So it doesn't help um, keep out frost in the end. And that's what you're gonna end up with. Vacuum seal, it's gonna look like this months from now. It's gorgeous. Um, so if you do not have a vacuum sealer and you want to try to put stuff up in the freezer, I'm going to push you um, to at least, you know, ask for one for your birthday if that's what you need to do. But it is worth it in the end to not lose food. Um, I didn't intend to pull these out to give you that example, but kind of realizing what the, how bad that chicken looked once I held it up to you. Um, you know, just a small little teaching moment. We all screw up. Um, but you do want to take the time to do that and get a vacuum sealer. It is worth the investment to do that. And we do see deals on them too, by the way, but it's worth it in the end. So um, these are fresh put up. I, I know I should have dated them, but I didn't. But they're good for ages. Um, so that's part of freezer prepping too. You've kind of done the work. I just need to pull that out and we're good to go. That's like a can of green beans. Just needs to be cooked. Um, so hopefully that helps. Um, now, Ashley had a question to jump back to questions for a second. Um, Ashley says, do I ever meal plan around coupons? That's a really good question, Ashley. If you're brand new, yes, that is the way that you need to meal plan. You need to pull up maybe the Publix ad on Southern Savers and look what meat is on sale this week and let's meal plan around the meats. Um, I don't I don't necessarily need a meal plan around the other pieces, but the meats when you're brand new, that's the most expensive part. You can make other things work, um, but look at what meat it happens to be on sale and try to plan your menus if you can around that. Um, if you don't have any sort of stockpile, then maybe I'm gonna grab what items I can that's on sale this week and we're gonna figure out our meals based on what we grabbed. Um, but I think you're gonna be okay. For folks that have been doing this a while, however, I do not plan based on what is on sale because I have a stockpile. I'm not actually shopping for anything that I need. And this is really going back to the basics of how we want to save the most in the grocery store. But just to quickly hit that, everything that goes that is in the grocery store goes on sale and it goes on sale every six weeks. So obviously it's not all on sale on one day, but this week what is on sale will not be back on sale for six weeks. So I want to go in, I want to grab what is on sale this week, and I want to grab enough of it to last me until it's back on sale. So if you're doing that, you kind of have your menus that you rotate through the same things that we tend to all eat. Um, you're 
you, you know what those are. You're grabbing those items as you need them. And so for me to meal plan, really, I'm just going to the pantry and getting what I want because anything that we would normally eat is already there. So I don't need to meal plan based on the sale because I have a stockpile already. If you're just getting started, as you were saying, you're new to the coupon game, so trying to see how you can tie it all in, then yeah, let's look at what meat's on sale and let's go from there. And the other thing that I would encourage you if you're just getting started is to also not only look at what meat's on sale, but what could I make again with that meat? So as I'm mentioning, you know, you could brown up hamburger and brown extra hamburger. That's a tip for everybody, but it's definitely a tip when you're getting started because if hamburger's on sale, then let's go ahead this week and let's plan two meals with hamburger and two meals with chicken. You know, trying to work in where we can uh, as we build our stockpile. You can definitely work in the other ingredients too, um, but when it comes down to grocery ingredients, so many of the things are kind of off the wall. You're not going to use cereal. You're not, you know, in, in dinner anyway. Uh, that most of what you're going to want is that entree base. What is actually, you know, the bulk of our meal and then the sides, we can figure that out as we go along. Um, so how long can fresh meat last if it's put in the freezer properly? Not like this. Um, if it's vacuum sealed, um, I would say nine months plus depending on, you know, is it in a deep freezer or is it in your inside freezer? That is another Thing to consider. So deep freezers actually stay colder. You're not opening and closing them all the time. Um, so deep freezers, a lot of folks will say a year um, and sometimes up, up to 16 months depending on the type of meat, Wendy. Um, but if it's vacuum sealed in a deep freezer, you've got a good year without a problem. And what vacuum seal machine would I use? Uh, recommend. So Sandy, we actually it's a long story, but we own two um, food savers, and I would recommend Food Saver. I've not tried any other brand, and Food Saver is what we tend to see the most sales on. Um, I would say we don't have one right now, but we tend to, in um, probably in March, we will see a $25 Food Saver coupon come out. They tend to give it to us uh, in March, and then we'll get it in late summer. Um, so look for Food Saver coupon. I did notice they're on sale this week in Target or actually watch foodsaver.com. That's their brand website. And they run a number of good like closeout clearance deals. They have some refurbished models that are cheaper too. They're actually running right now. Um, I think it's still running. It could have ended, but they run this pretty regularly. Um, buy two, get two free on their bags or rolls. So the rolls are the way to go. This is just a giant roll of bag material and you use your vacuum sealer to make bags. So you just seal one end, fill it with food, and then seal the other end. Um, but the rolls are much cheaper than buying bags. So definitely if you haven't bought one before, go rolls. And the new unit will actually come with some so you can uh, get a feel for what you want and kind of play with it before you need to grab some others. Um, but Food Saver is the, you know, and there may be others that'll chime in from their experiences on um, other brands, but just since that's the one that I've used, I gotta say that's the one that I would, I would recommend. Um, we also, and I just saw my husband put it in the comments too, um, so we've also used off-name bags. This is a, or rolls, this is an on-brand on um, that we got with a buy three, get three, but we have used off-brand as well, rolls, um, from Amazon that have worked great too. So you don't have to stick with the name brand, but when Food Saver runs their buy two, get two, or buy three, get three, it makes it the same price as the off brand. So, you know, might as well. And they run free shipping all the time. So if you're logged into their Fresh Rewards program, you get free shipping on their website. Um, and then, you know what, I just got a, no a little note from my mom. She actually just said uh, that there's actually an Ibotta right now for Food Saver bags uh, or rolls on Ibotta. So you could head to Target or Walmart, who also sell the rolls, and there's a $2 off a two-pack um, for Food Saver rolls in Ibotta. So if you're out and you can't wait for it to ship, you go that, that route too. Um, so lots, lots of options for saving on your food saver uh, and good. I'm seeing other folks chime in that you love your, um, your food savers too. Um, so we're not the only ones, it's just the only brand we've tried. So where were we? Um, now one thing I do want to mention before we get too far off topic on anyone else's questions, if you haven't caught it on Southern Savers, we do post a month long meal plan every single month. Uh, and if you go to the top of Southern Savers, 
you will see um, meal plans as one of the options under um, the frugal living section at the top of the site. So um, when you pull up Southern Savers, uh, it's just kind of one of the headers at the top of the site that's going to give you that option. Click on meal plans and you'll see every, or I think it might be menu plans. Let's see, I'm pulling up the the internet here. Um, so click on frugal living, menu plans, not meal plans. But um, when you click on that, you'll see every post that we've done on meal planning. So February, a week long paleo, January, and then it just keeps on going back. These meal plans, um, if you've not ever looked at them before, it is something that you can just download. It's a PDF, but the PDF has, and people always ask me, where are the recipes? Once you download the PDF, each one of these is a direct link to the recipe. Some of them are Southern Savers recipes, not all of them, so you will end up kind of hopping around to where we found them. This, by the way, is amazing. My children would eat this every week if we made, um, this is a copycat from Olive Garden, so you should go there. Um, <laughs> that was uh, la uh, la on last week's meals, but you get the idea, you're gonna click on each one. It's gonna take you straight to where you want to go and again they're not all on Southern Tabor so they're just as we kind of piece this together we also um, January was all keto but we still try hard and a lot of these most of these are recipes that you could still ta tailor to being whatever um, you might you know a specific diet that you might be trying to do so um, hopefully that helps you guys that just gives you an idea of what's there it's free there's no need to pay for a meal planning service, really, there isn't. Um, so again, to show you where I found these, go to Frugal Living and Menu Plans and you will see them. Um, and we'll stick the link straight to Menu Plans um, in the comments too, but that's how you're going to find them. So hopefully um, that will be some help to you guys. You won't have to do a lot of thinking or or dreaming up what's for dinner. We, you know, I, we make it every month, but I don't necessarily follow the exact one that we post. Um, because I have to, you know, give a shout out. My husband actually cooks dinner probably half the time around here. And he will be the one that follows it more than I will. You're like, well, it was on the meal plan today. So this is what I made. Like, good job. Way to go. Um, and then the other nights I'll jump in and grab what was kind of on my meal plan. So it just, it depends on uh, who's in the kitchen that night. But I have no complaints. If you want to cook dinner, you can cook whatever you want. Um, you know, you got to be willing to throw that, that meal plan out the window if someone's willing to help you. Uh, so, uh, Ashley, off topic, uh, your printer is kick the bucket, and you've heard me mention a specific printer. So anything made by Brother, a Brother black and white laser printer is the way to go. There is a deal at Staples right now. Um, actually, I think it just went up earlier today. Um, it did. It's uh, If you head to the homepage, it's one of the deals that's still on the homepage. Um, but I can show you the deal anyway. So it is a Staples Brother printer this week. This is a printer, copier, scanner. We do see deals where it's slightly cheaper for just the printer, but we're talking like five bucks cheaper. So this is a pretty good deal to get the printer, copier, scanner um, for $85 shipped. So this is from Staples because Staples right now has an online coupon code for $15 off any $60 purchase. So I would go this route. It's a pretty good deal. Uh, and anything Brother black and white laser printer is probably the best deal that you're gonna get on a printer because you don't have to pay for ink. Um, they come with toner and the toner only costs like 12 bucks to get a new toner that's gonna last you a couple thousand pages. So it's pretty impressive. Um, so, uh, and does Brother have color printers? They do, Tina. But when you get into, you don't want to even touch a color laser printer. You're talking 200 plus dollars for color laser. You just want to stick with an inkjet at that point. And honestly, I would just go cheap uh, because sometimes the you can get a cheap printer cheaper than you can get new ink for a printer. I mean, that's really where they are. Ink is their money maker. Um, we have a color printer. We never use it. We only use the black and white printer. And the more you think about it, there's really not much in most of our lives that needs to be printed in color. So, um, you know, we're happy. It's just printing reports for kids and papers and coupons. And coupons work great in black and white. So I would go that route if you can. Um, and so talking about, Jessica is mentioning um, 
she says potatoes and anything with milk doesn't always freeze the best either that the color and the texture can be off so seeing your comment kind of makes me uh, think about one topic that folks don't always realize uh, yes anything with milk can be slightly off however uh, if you are willing to remix it or get a kind of uh, an emulsion blender that will tend to handle any milk that is separated if you are freezing like a soup and then gonna bring the soup back out. Um, the other thing you could do, like the Zupa Toscana soup that I just mentioned, anything that has uh, an ingredient where cream is added towards the end, go ahead and pull off from that soup. You know, if I was gonna make that soup and I wanted to freeze half of it, then let's go ahead and pull off the half before we add the cream, freeze it, and then when you thaw it, just pick back up at that last step before the cream was added. So that could be like a potato and corn chowder. Um, that could be the Zupa Toscana. There's a lot of things where cream gets added in the last, you know, 15, 20 minutes of cooking. Well, just save that step and freeze before you finish. Just like you would make chicken enchiladas, I'm not gonna bake it and then put it in the freezer. I'm gonna put it in the freezer and bake it later. Same concept. So we're gonna leave off that last step. Chicken pot pie, I'm not gonna bake first. I'm just gonna put it in the freezer and bake it once I pull it out. It gives you kind of that 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 help there. Uh, but one thing in terms of things you can freeze, milk actually freezes great. You can take the gallon straight from the, the grocery store and stick one in the freezer if you want. It basically stops time. So if I put the gallon in the freezer today and it had seven more days left on it, um, then when you pull it out, it has seven more days left on it. Now, this is also a tip if you're going out of town. So if you have a gallon of milk that is going to go bad on February 20th, and today is the 10th, and you're going out of town, I can put that gallon of milk, it could be a half gallon of milk, in the freezer. And when you get home from vacation, pull it out of the freezer, let it thaw. It's going to take about a day to thaw but you've got that milk left. You didn't have to like make all the kids drink milk for the last 24 hours of being home so that it didn't go bad. Um, you still have it. So think about that, you know, just a way to, you may not need to freeze milk on a regular basis, but it can be a really good tip when you're about to go out of town uh, to just get it out of the fridge. There are other things you can freeze too. Cheese is the trickiest. So if you do decide, you know, I want to get some things out of the fridge, Cheese can be frozen, but you're only going to want to use it in baking situations once it comes out. It's not, it just doesn't have the same, you wouldn't want to cut it up and just eat it like a slice of cheese. You would, it'd be great to put it as a topping on chicken enchiladas before you stuck them in the oven, but that's about it. So, um, you know, other than that, you can freeze to your heart's content almost anything that is in your refrigerator. If you really wanted to, eggs also can be frozen. It's a crazy concept, I know, but they can be. Uh, are there any meals that I would not recommend freezing? Or do you have to cook any meals before they are refrozen? So Diana, try to think about the things that we regularly cook. Pasta does not freeze well. So, um, well, it, unless it is gonna be baked later, does not freeze well. So I can, I can cook, uh, or sorry, I can do pasta in like a casserole or baked ziti or lasagna. That's gonna freeze great. But if you've got a soup, like a chicken noodle soup, and the noodles are already in that chicken noodle soup, those noodles are not gonna be so wonderful. When they, They're really just gonna fall apart once you warm the soup back up. That's another one where before you add the noodles, I would go ahead and pull off half of the soup. Let's freeze the chicken soup, basically, and add the, the noodles when we re-warm it back up and we recook it. It's going to be a billion times better than it was if you had just taken half after you cooked it and put it away. And I know that you may be left with, but what if I take off too much? You know what, you haven't frozen it yet because you still really gotta let it cool before it goes in the freezer. Um, so if that's the case, then you just dip into what you pulled aside. But odds are you're gonna get a good feel for how much your crew can eat uh, and you could go ahead and get that frozen and, and dealt with. But in the moment, it's going to be okay. You're not going to make anyone starve because mama's trying to save half the meal. Um, they're going to be all, all okay. Um, okay. And, um, oh, and Betsy says, different apps, in my opinion, is my points worth it? So I don't use my points, Betsy. Um, 
I so I can't necessarily tell you. Um, and then Shopkick alerts. Have I thought about adding them to the deals like I do Checkout 51? I can with Shopkicks. Um, it's not one that I've also used. So Shopkicks and I, we have a long history together. It is not a favorite of mine. I've tried it numerous, numerous times, put it on the phone, tried to use it for a little bit. It is a, every time I put it on my phone, it is a massive battery drainer. And I am a little bit OCD with apps that steal my battery. Um, so it'll end up lasting on my phone for a couple of weeks before I kick it off every single time. Um, and honestly, the only way to use Shopkicks in the best method is to keep location services on all the time if you really want to earn points and it's going to kill your battery. That's just the concept of the app and I can't handle it. Um, but I will look into it um, and to see whether or not we can at least add them into the database for you um, so that you can earn those points more often. I just can't promise that I'm going to start using it because yeah, when you really mess with my battery. I don't, I lose some loyalty. Um, so, uh, and then in terms of apps too, um, and it, uh, just to go there, that is what we're going to talk about on our next Q and A. So any major app questions, I would encourage you to, you know, jump back in with us next time too, because we're going to talk about all of them and I will try to make sure we even talk about shop kicks and I'll put it back on my phone. Um, just for, just for that time. Uh, and then Evelyn is also asking, I, it is okay to be off topic, guys. I do not mind questions no matter where they go. Um, how the cashback rebates from Kroger works. So Kroger Cashback only works online right now. Uh, and basically you load the offers from Kroger's website. So go to Kroger.com, search for cashback. You'll find it. You load those offers straight to your Kroger card. When you purchase the participating offers, you're going to earn the cash back in your Kroger account. Um, and here they've they've actually at least added it to the top of their site now, which is helpful. You used to have to really you know know where you needed to go with it. Um, so I'm going to pull it up for you here. You load these offers straight to your shoppers card. You buy the offers, and they walk you through this by the way right here at the top of the site. Um, buy the offers that are linked to your card. You earn cash. When you have enough cash, you can check out through PayPal basically, cash out all of those offers. Now guys, I don't shop in Kroger, so you're seeing um, that I have not earned any of these because I haven't been to Kroger in months. Um, so I like to keep it real, but I we do cover Kroger. We do have a number of these in the list and honestly, they line up identically with Ibotta. So if you're kind of curious what's out there, there's probably an Ibotta and a Kroger cashback offer on the same offer. They also tend to have the same limits. So if an offer is a limit of five, this one says it's good up to five times, it would have the same limit on Ibotta as well. It does make for some good deals with that overlapping. I will warn you that is something that Kroger and Ibotta are trying to fix um, because they're really using Ibotta's back end on this uh, and it's not a system that they're wanting you to stack. Um, so Kroger doesn't like stacking ever, even when it is working with their system. So for now, that is the case. That's how it's launched. Um, they're both out at the same time and you can do them. They're not, it's not against the policy. It's just not necessarily how they're wanting the system to work, but it's that simple. You load them, you buy the item with your shopper's card and you earn, um, that cash back automatically. You're good to go. So kind of an inside note on that, by the way, guys. If you use Ibotta, you'll notice that Ibotta used to be linked with Kroger. It hasn't worked in months and months. This is why. Um, so trying to make the Kroger system easier to use than the Ibotta system was kind of their first step in um, trying to, to win, I guess you could say, between the two of them. Um, so that hopefully that answers your question. It's very easy to use, but we'll also try to hit that a little bit um, more uh, next time when we talk about apps. Christy, seeing your question pop in too, uh, any deep freezer recommendations for a family of four? So when it comes to freezers, chest freezers are definitely the cheapest that you'll find. Uh, a small seven cubic, five to seven cubic freezer is actually probably plenty for a family of four. It's not very big and they're really the cheapest that you'll see. So you can get that seven cubic chest freezer for less than 200 bucks, sometimes less than like 175. Black Friday, we see really good deals on them. I know that's kind of far away. 
I wouldn't necessarily hold out if you're wanting a freezer. Um, but we're coming President's Day even. Coming into any three-day weekend, you can usually find some pretty good deals on um, any type of appliance, and this would be added in too. Also look for deals of online specifically. Um, so Best Buy, Lowe's, they tend to run more deals on chest freezers online because in a lot of stores, they don't even carry chest freezers. Uh, you won't even find even a, a standing deep freezer um, with the shelves, the actual you know door deep freezer. They don't, they don't have them in the store. So you wanna shop online. You can remember you can price match even online with their customer service and still get a great price on them. Um, but that's where I would head first. Brand wise, I mean, you can try to stick with the major brands if you want. Some of the smaller brands are made by brands you may not know. So Igloo actually makes a chest freezer. Magic Chef is another one that Best Buy will sell. They all have pretty good ratings. Uh, and as you know, just read the ratings on them and make sure you're good. You're not you're not spending a massive amount of money, uh, but you should be able to get a decent one that's going to last you for a while um, without any issues. Now, long term, if you've got the extra money, getting a stand-up deep freeze that has the shelves is a little nicer. So I'm not telling you you have to spend more money, but not having to dig what is in the bottom of your freezer out um, is, a, is a happy happy thing. So um, I'm, I'm just going to mention that. They are in no way the same price as chest freezers, though. So the stand-up, they have a real name, and I can't for the life of me think of it. But a stand-up freezer, it's got the, it's got, it, you know, it's like opening your fridge, but it's huge. Um, you're probably talking for a, a name brand, um, decent size stand-up freezer because they are bigger. They aren't the little seven cubic. You're probably talking about starting in like 15 cubic freezer is going to be 400 easy, if not a little bit more for a good freezer. So you're talking two chest freezers and then some to get that guy. So you might just want to go chest freezer. If you do, a tip here. It's not necessarily where we're going, but since we're on the topic, uh, I highly recommend uh, that you use uh, reusable grocery bags and you keep ground beef in a reusable grocery bag and just set it straight in the chest freezer. Keep chicken in a reusable grocery bag. They're organized that way by what they are. So then when I'm looking in the freezer, I can find what I need. Now I'm mentioning meat because to me, that is where a freezer pays for itself. It's not in the meals that I can put aside, which are wonderful and take a lot of stress off of your plate. But it's the fact that you can buy food in bulk at really good prices and have it put up correctly in vacuum seal bags, not incorrectly. In not vacuum seal bags, but buying it in bulk, putting it up, you're going to get crazy good prices by buying meat in bulk, buying produce when it's in season, vacuum sealing it and having it ready to go. So, you know, green beans, this is not green bean season, but having this, this is about, a, you know, a can and a half's worth. It's enough to feed my crew vacuum sealed. It may not look it, but it's suctioned down. Uh, we're a two can family. Once you hit seven people, one can of green beans doesn't cut it. Um, but this is what we need. Well, I could have a ton of these from last summer's garden. They're still good and they're perfect to pull out all winter long. So that's where having a deep freezer helps you. But having green beans scattered all over your chest freezer doesn't work. So that's the reusable shopping bag way. I've seen people do boxes, but boxes aren't as flexible for fitting around and making things work in the chest freezer. And then maybe having zones so that you know or you can tell your kids like meat is in this corner, veggies are kind of in this corner. So they have some idea because my kids are the ones that I tend to send out to the freezer more than I do. Hey, go get some hamburger. Um, it took them a little while to learn what was what. We didn't always get what we wanted when we asked, but teaching them where things are in the freezer and that they stay there helps to keep it a little bit more organized. Um, and uh, to jump back, Kathy's asking, Kroger Cashback, does it work in Kroger Affiliates? You know, Kathy, I have to say that's a, a, a true stump, Jenny, on that one, because not knowing pick and save. What I would recommend, Kathy, is that like for Kroger, all I did was it's at the top of the site and it's under save at the header of Kroger's site is seeing whether or not it's even mentioned on the pick and save site. I will tell you like Harris Teeter is owned by Kroger. This does not exist at Harris Teeter. Um, so my guess is that it is not available in every um, Kroger affiliate market. Um, but 
probably some of the larger ones. Um, so potentially, you're just going to need to check. Um, and Anna is asking, is Publix better? You know, it really is what you're more comfortable with. And when it comes down to promotional models, I'm not a mega event kind of girl. That is what Kroger loves to run. They're decent deals, but they're about the same deals that we see with buy one get ones in Publix. So there's some trade off when you're picking your store promotional model. I like the buy one get one model because I don't have to. I don't have to second guess it. Mega event model, you do need a second guess. Not everything is a decent price, so I got to focus on what is actually on sale, and 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 figuring all that out. Um, the other piece of it, though, is that Publix has a ton of store coupons that you can use with manufacturer's coupons. Uh, and Kroger, while they have store coupons and a ton of them right now, all their five-time use coupons, they are going to fight you tooth and nail to use them with paper coupons, even though they're store coupons. Um, so it's just kind of going where it's the waters are smoother, maybe. It's more friendly for me, and that's just in my area. So I'm not going to speak for everybody, and it's what you're comfortable with. I've always been a Publix girl. I was born and raised in Florida. It's hard for Floridians to give up their Publix stores, and maybe it's just stuck in my blood up here, too. I'm not sure. Um, and uh, let's see. Oh, and how do you print public coupons and use multiples from there? So, okay, Erica, um, that is a huge pu Publix deal. We will definitely stop freezer cooking. If you need diapers, this is your Publix deal. Um, just so you are not missing it, Huggies diapers through Tuesday night uh, in outside of Florida, through Wednesday night in Florida. Crazy, crazy cheap for Huggies diapers. They are on sale $9 off when you buy three packs of Huggies diapers and we've got coupons. So to pull up the coupons, um, Publix kind of hid their coupons. I can no longer directly link to them for you guys. I've got the direct link in there, but it won't load. Um, but you want to come to their weekly ad page. Uh, let me make it smaller so I'm not in the middle of it there. Come to their weekly ad page and then scroll down and you'll see this little baby item sale booklet. Click on the baby item sale and Huggies diapers, they're right there, $2 off Huggies diapers. Click on see details. Um, come on, buddy. And then once I click on see details, there, print coupon. That's all I've got to do. The coupon says it's a limit of one coupon per item, so pull it up. It does not have a limit on the number of coupons that you use. You want to print three copies of this coupon because you are going to buy three packs of diapers. They're on sale, $9 off of three. So follow me on the math. The diapers are basically nine bucks. They're $8.99 for the Snug and Dry. So buy three packs at $8.99. You're gonna get nine dollars off of one pack. So that just made or nine dollars off because you bought three. That just made one of them free. You're gonna get another nine dollars off from just the coupons. You're gonna use three of these two dollar off coupons, three one dollar off manufacturer's coupons. Um, so that's another nine bucks. So now you're paying for one pack of diapers and you're getting two for free. This is a pretty sweet deal. They come out to $2.99 a piece. So that's how you're going to find the coupon. Again, we went to Publix.com, um, clicked on the weekly ads page, and then you've got the weekly ad itself is going to pull up this guy down here. And so you just need to scroll down and look for the booklet that you're looking for, which is the baby care booklet, Happy Hearts, Happy Wallets. And you've got that. So that deal is going to end um, tomorrow night. If your store is sold out because it is a crazy good deal, all you need to do is get a rain check. So go to Publix, they're sold out, do a happy dance, do get a rain check um, because then you have that sale, the $9 off three uh, for as long as, you know, for 30 more days and this $2 off coupon does not expire until the 26th of February. Odds are we're going to get more manufacturer's coupons as well between now and the 26th of February. So uh, honestly, if you're in diaper mode and you did this deal earlier this week, I would go back and I would hope that they're out of them so that I could get a rain check and do the deal again. Because this public store coupon, you can print it as many times as you want. Um, it expires on the 26th of February. So it's just taking advantage of the sale with the coupon that is making them $2.99 a pack. Yeah, that's a crazy good price. So derailing menu plans because... If you're in diver mode, you need all the help you can get. Um, so share that with friends. Do not let them miss it. And actually, if you know if that was a little too fast for you, I will um, share the actual link of the deal where we mapped it out. I um, posted it yesterday as a reminder for folks. Um, 
just so that they didn't, you know, just trying to make sure you remember I did it as a video, guys. I mean, whenever there's some seriously good deals, I try to shout it from the rooftops as much as I can so that y'all don't miss it. Um, but I will stick this one in the comment too. Okay, so um, let's jump back to other things. Oh, Hope, I'm glad you saw the news segment yesterday. I have to ask uh, whether it was, um, a, a, you know, what the segment was on because last week I did so many different news segments. Uh, it was kind of fun, um, but I did a segment that should be in a lot of markets if your markets pick it up on what's on sale in February. So I'm gonna hope it was that one because I'm not sure how fast that one was gonna get produced. Um, so let me know, leave it in the comments and let me know which one you saw. Okay, um, Ashley has a CBS question. Um, I purchased toothpaste on sale at CBS the other day and had a coupon. It was supposed to give me $1.30 in extra care bucks and it didn't. Um, so Ashley, if the extra care bucks do not print, usually, usually the, the problem is actually that you bought like the wrong size or the wrong type. They're usually dead on with what should print. However, if you know that you've got the right thing uh, and the bottom of your receipt doesn't show like that you were a partial of the way there or it doesn't even mention it, I would call CVS Corporate. Their phone number's on their website at the bottom of the site and they can look at your account and they can tell you exactly what happened. They can even reissue extra care bucks that should have printed. They'll put them right on your card so you're good to go. Um, they're usually really really helpful about it. Um, definitely, if it was their problem, they'll give it an easy fix, but they'll also walk you through what it is that you might have grabbed that was the wrong thing if that was the case. Okay, back on topic. Amy has a great question. What type of containers are good for freezing casseroles, and do I freeze them for about a month before my family needs to eat them? Love this question. Um, so containers, I we see deals all the time on foil pans. I think they're actually BOGO this week or next week. I've already done the new Publix ad, so my brain is long lost. Uh, and if you need to know, by the way, use the item search. Just search for the word foil. We um, we see these pans on sale at all the stores all the time. Get them when they're buying, get one. Get them after Christmas when they clearance out the ones that have red bows on them or whatever. Get them and keep those foil pans um, just ready to go so that when you double a recipe, I've got something to put it in. Those foil pans are great. Do not keep the plastic lids that come with them. They are useless. They're useless no matter how you use them. Just throw those things away. Uh, and let's just use uh, aluminum foil. Double aluminum foil the top because it will get torn the longer that it's in the freezer or things get stacked on top of it. Uh, and it's good to go. I wouldn't keep it in the freezer any longer than a month, though, because it's not technically got a seal. It's got a crimp around the edges, but it's nothing like having vacuum sealed an item that's in your freezer. So a month or less. What I do, or try to do anyway in my brain, is kind of, it's almost like you're working ahead uh, in terms of work, like anything that I can put uh, and get scheduled to go up on Southern Savers. It's like I had a little moment where I get to, get to take a break. Um, same thing in terms of meals. So plan a freezer meal once a week so that I'm rotating out what's in the freezer. So maybe, or twice a week, if you have that many things in your freezer. But this way, not only do I have left overnight one night a week, but I have another night every week that all I needed to do was pull that out the night before and let it thaw. I didn't need to do any other work. Um, so those would be great for nights that are busy, nights that everyone's going in a different direction. You didn't have any prep and dinner can be on the table pretty quickly. Once a week, pulling something out so that we're just rotating what's in there as a freezer meal. Now you can go crazy and you can freezer cook everything for the whole month and just work from that too. Um, I meant to pull these links for my husband, um, but I'm going to kind of send him on a hunt to find this one. Um, but we have done uh, uh, one that was a big list of, like I think, seven different meals that you could then cook three of each of those seven different meals and put up 21 meals all at the same time. I actually did a video on it as well. We did this when I was pregnant with my fifth. I think. Um, so got 21 meals put away and we just got to eat off of that for really longer than three weeks because the church also brought us meals. It was pretty sweet to not have to think about that at all. They were great meals. Beef stroganoff, corn and potato chowder, chicken pot pies. You know, so um, we will find that, that link and stick it into the comments. Um, and if he can't, I'll find the link when we're done. It is a few years old, so it'll take him a minute, but um, that is a great way to get started on freezer cooking as well. And you just do it all in one day because they use so many of the same ingredients. They use shredded chicken and they use ground beef. So once we get our meat together, we're good to go. 
Now, I want to give you guys a secret tip. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's one of those things you shouldn't share. It's not the cheapest meat that you can get. So it's not necessarily saving money, but it is saving time. If you want to try freezer cooking and you want to get a lot of things done, but you want to take one element out of freezer cooking, which can be browning the meat or shredding the chicken, that kind of thing, I love at Sam's, uh, or sorry, Costco, it's not at Sam's, they may have it, but you gotta go digging at Sam's. I bought it at Costco. They sell rotisserie chicken meat that is already pulled and vacuum sealed. I'd say three pound or three and a half pound container of rotisserie chicken meat. It is pulled, it is cooked, it is ready to go. And it is enough to make for us like eight or more chicken pot pies, if that's all that I did with it. Um, and we did do that one time. We did that to stock the church's freezer with meals for just upcoming pregnancies and anyone that had just had an issue and needed a meal. Perfect. Uh, not only could I whip up some pretty fast chicken pot pies not having to deal with the meat, uh, to me it was just worth it in the end uh, to not have to clean up after all that everything. So just going to mention it. It isn't money saving because I want to say that three and a half pound pre-cooked chicken is still like $11.99 in Costco. So you're basically paying a little under $4 a pound. It is cooked and it's deboned and it's pretty awesome. But it is nowhere as cheap as buying chicken. You know, we get our regular chicken breast from the U.S. Food Chef store that we have in town and that's like $1.10 a pound. So it's definitely, you know, kicking up your cost a little bit. But if, you know, just time is more of an issue over money, look into that. So it's pretty, it's pretty awesome if time is the issue. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, Wendy says it wouldn't print three Huggies coupons because the Huggies requires an email address. Um, Oh, and that works too, you know, if you can't get it with three different email addresses. So a lot of times the printable coupons, even you can still usually back up and get a second one um, with the same login, Wendy, on the Huggies site. So print it and then hit the back button and print it again. If Huggies wasn't letting you, then, you know, going in with two, it's still a pretty sweet price and not having a $1 coupon, you at least had those store $2 offs. Um, Oh, um, so uh, yeah, I'm loving all of y'all's tips for each other too and the things that you're sharing. Uh, so disposable pans. Oh, and one other thing on your question too that I uh, kind of half answered, mentioned the pans. We will also use Ziploc plastic containers. They're great for the freezer. Uh, you may not think it, but there are a number of meals that just fit perfectly in there when you are more prepping the meals. So when... um. When we find the link, if I don't know if my husband's found it and plugged it in yet or not, but the link to all of the um, freezer cooking meals that we've done. Um, oh, yay, he did. Okay, so um, all of the freezer cooking meals that we've done, some of those we did put just straight into plastic containers. They work fine. You're not going to use them for longer than a month anyway, but they're really meal prepping. So you're putting in the ingredients for beef stroganoff. You're not putting in the pasta, uh, just the ingredients. It's going into that container. And then I'm still going to do a little bit of cooking on that because that's really a crock pot recipe. So was the potato and corn chowder. So it's okay that it's going into a plastic container into the freezer. It's going to, it's going to turn out just fine in the end, but aluminum foil pans with aluminum foil over the top, plastic containers, and then Ziploc bags. So you could totally have something in a Ziploc bag, zip it shut, seal it. You could also technically put a meal in a, a, a and Ziploc it, or sorry, a vacuum seal it as well, just depending on um, what size bags you have. These are the small ones. They're not going to fit um, a ton of things in here, but you get the idea. They make 11-inch rolls as well. If it all would fit in there, go for it. Vacuum seal it, and it could last even longer. Um, okay. Um, you can freeze rice, not in a casserole. Yes, so you can. So if you've got extra rice, it freezes great. Go ahead and cook extra rice, stick it in a Ziploc bag, vacuum seal it if you want to. Um, just add a little bit of water when you thaw it out to kind of give it that extra steam and boost and it'll, it'll be great when it comes back out. There's a lot that you can freeze um, and not really have issues with at all. Okay. Uh, and then, so Christine's also chiming in that they get the half-size steam pans from Sam's Club, a 50-pack. 
Uh, the aluminum lids are sold there too and are sturdier than just using tin foil and it's less than 10 bucks for the pan. So if you've got the warehouse membership, for sure, that's a great deal to grab 50 of them for 10 bucks. Uh, you're not gonna be able to get the, the foil pans even on sale that cheap usually. Um, so great deal. And I'm glad I'm not the only one that buys my that chicken at, um, at Costco. It, it, it's, it's a decent time saver. Um, okay. Oh, and the shredded chicken. So Wendy, there are other places. I would imagine even Sam's sells it. I just haven't gone digging in Sam's. And I have to confess, I have a Sam's membership. If you haven't already, there is the, they're running the free deal this spring and is back. So I don't have a Sam's membership. My husband has a Sam's membership this year. I had it last year. Uh, he has it this year. But we have a Costco membership because my mother is super sweet and she has a Costco membership and shares her Costco membership with me. So um, that's the only reason I'm in there. I do not actually recommend that you have memberships to all the warehouse clubs in uh, in the town. It's not necessary. Um, but Sam's is running a free membership right now. I'm going to make my husband jump and find all sorts of links tonight. Um, I'll try to help you out with that one. Uh, but um, this right now what's running at Sam's is if you, you pay $45 for the membership and then you get $45 off of your first purchase when you use the Sam's app. So the Sam's app has scan and go uh, and you scan the products as you're checking out. Um, in the store with the app. You scan the products. You literally don't even go to the register. It's actually pretty awesome because all the people are lined up like they um, they just want to line up. Uh, but you don't need to do that. So just scan everything with the app. Check out with the app. You get $45 off of your first purchase. So you just got the whole membership back in free products. It's a pretty sweet deal. So they run this. They ran it last spring. We did not see it again after last spring and it is back. Um, so I would grab that one if you can. If you need a Sam's Club membership, it's um, it's it's a good deal to grab for membership. There we go. You're totally on it tonight, husband. Um, he found the link before I could. I'm not very good at talking and searching. Um, okay, any tips for a small apartment and small freezer for saving with meal planning? So first off, Sarah, apartments and freezers are tricky because having a space to even put that freezer you know, you're probably like talking about putting it on the back porch and that's getting tricky. I don't need the neighbors in my freezer. So you may or may not even be able to have the space, but they do make a tiny five cubit freezer. You could get it. It's probably like 125 bucks on sale. It would fit inside. You are probably going to need to have it though on an outlet that ends up being on its own circuit breaker. So I'm not sure how that would work. You wouldn't want to stick it on an outlet that you're also running a hair dryer or anything else on, uh, or you'll be flipping that circuit breaker a lot. Um, so just ponder how it's really going to work in the apartment. Um, what I might do if you have, or sorry, and maybe your, your plan wasn't even going for getting an extra freezer, but if you're working on your inside freezer, so I just have my normal refrigerator freezer, I'm not going to get extra freezer space then what I would recommend is you truly go with that. You've probably seen pictures where people have gone like super, super thin. They are laying everything out flat and freezing it flat. So um, basically, you're going to fill uh, your freezer bags. You're going to put your freezer bags and you're going to smush them. Uh, you can even smush them between baking pans if you want and get them to freeze perfectly flat so that they can be stacked. So all of your uh, your frozen items they don't necessarily look like this. This wouldn't be the way to go. It would be smushing this to where it was completely flat and it would line up like books on a bookshelf. That's the way to go in the freezer. Also taking advantage of magazine storage racks. Um, so you'll, it, you know, they sell the little boxes. They sell little plastic bins. Don't go cardboard here, go plastic. Get them on Amazon for five bucks. But a magazine storage rack, put that in the freezer and then use that to line up things as well. Um, for meals, you would want to store most of your meals if you could in Ziploc bags as well, freezing as flat as you can with those meals and then standing them up in those magazine racks would be an ideal way to organize an inside freezer. You would be like, invite Martha Stewart over because your freezer would look so awesome, but it's going to hold a lot more stuff uh, as well. Okay. Um, and can you save without an extra freezer? Totally. So hopefully that was a bigger answer um, in the end. You know, you don't have to have the freezer. Where the freezer is going to help you the most is meat and buying meat in bulk. 
Um, but you can still just shop the deals if you wanted or just buy a little bit of meat in bulk instead of buying a ton. So maybe instead of hitting the chef's store and grabbing 40 pounds of chicken, which would fill your entire little tiny freezer, uh, you're just going to wait for meat markdowns and we're going to stock up when we see those meat markdowns. Now, uh, I've already mentioned, you know, I'm pretty much a public shopper, but if you want meat markdowns, you're not going to find them in Publix. So I do need to know kind of the best place to be, or you need to talk to your meat manager in your grocery store. When do you mark down meat? Is there a particular day for that or a particular time for that so that you can be there and you can take advantage of those meat markdowns? You don't have to get as much there uh, and you're still going to get some decent prices. Publix does not mark down meat, so you will not find that at all in Publix. But other grocery stores do, so it's just finding out when your store does that and be in there, not missing that moment. Um, so hopefully um, that helps a little bit too. Um, oh, that's awesome. Uh, so Sarah says she was starting to coupon in college, and now we're helping you get started at, at uh, Family Life. I'm glad that you're still hanging in and still trying to save too, Sarah. Um, so Paige, if I got a Sam's membership and it's expiring, can I take advantage of the deal or do I need to put it in someone else's name? It's going to have to go in someone else's name, Paige. So the Sam's membership to renew it cannot go in the same name that it was. Um, it has to be in a membership that expired, I think outside of six months ago to be able to do that free Sam's membership that is now running again. Um, so what we did last year, um, I got the membership. I did not put a second person on the membership. So my husband's name was never put on the membership. And then he signed up and the membership is now under him. We will never put the membership under my name this year and life is good. So, and you get the idea of where we'll go next year, um, but that's how you want to work it. Um, but just so you, you've got it down with the, 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 the membership deals. Uh, Jocelyn says that she does Target for meat markdowns, um, that her grocery store usually doesn't market. And Target does good meat markdowns with big stickers on them that'll say three and four bucks off. Uh, and Jessica's saying that buy low marks theirs down on Tuesdays. I found Kroger tends to do Mondays in our area. It just depends on your store, really. So you really do want to ask your meat manager. Sometimes it's what day the meat manager's working. Like he just doesn't trust it to the underlings. Um, so just finding out. What's your routine? What day do you normally do this? And you're going to find some crazy good deals on me. Okay, um, I am going to go ahead and hop off. I think we've kind of hit everyone's questions uh, and we got pretty far. If you just joined in or you joined in late, I, we did share some great links like to where you can find all the meal plans on Southern Savers to help you get started. All of those meal plans, when you click on them and download them, they have recipes behind every single meal. Uh, and then start small. So, you, you know, just map out this week. Give it five or six ideas and think about your favorite meals. Let's plug those favorite meals in and then leave a spot for maybe one new recipe this week. And always leave a spot for leftovers. Never leave those off the list. You should always cook with the plan for leftovers too, guys. I guess before I hop off, I should mention that. So you'll notice there's only dinner here. I don't meal plan for breakfast or lunch. Breakfast is cereal. You can figure it out for yourself if you don't want cereal. Lunch is leftovers in our house. So we homeschool. We're here all the time. Ah, every day. Uh, I am not going to cook you two meals a day. You will eat leftovers. You will fend for yourself. You will make sandwiches. I keep all of that on hand. Dinner is what we're going to handle, and we do cook extra. Now, there are seven of us, so you already have to cook extra just to have enough on the table, but we do cook extra just to have enough in the, fr in the fridge for leftovers as well. And then a lot of times the things that not everybody loved end up getting left for a leftover night. Not my problem. We're still having left overnight because we're going to eat it. We're not going to waste that food. Um, that's our plan. So we only meal plan dinner and then we make everything else fit in how it does around the week. So hopefully this helps you guys get started too. Just keep it really small. We don't need to go overboard. You don't need to plan for a whole month unless you're just, you know, feeling awesome and feeling like you can tackle that. Um, but short and sweet is, is the way to go. And Lynn, yes, I've already done CVS and Walgreens videos and my husband has already edited them. We are on the ball this week. So I will push um, CVS Live in the morning, um, probably tomorrow morning, just to not overwhelm Facebook with a ton of video in one night. And I'll probably get Walgreens up later on tomorrow. So you get them a whole day earlier than we've been getting them out. Um, oh, and then this little meal plan binder, Sandy, this is just a weekly family planner. You'll find these in like Hobby Lobby in um, various places. You can uh, they're, they're all over the place, but it's just a weekly planner. We, I do have this little guy too. I pulled them all out. 
This is an Erin Condren mini planner, so you can go any way that you want, um, and you can map out everything if you wanted to here. Um, sometimes, though, I mean, just putting on a sheet of paper and sticking it on the front of the fridge works just as well as fancy, so it's whatever kind of works for your family. Okay, I am going to hop off, and before I do, I'm going to let you know, we are not going to have a Q&A next week. Uh, so we are going to have some family, uh, little mini vacation. It's President's Day, right? Aren't you all celebrating? Uh, probably not. But we are going to have uh, no Q&A next Monday night. And we will have a Q&A the following Monday. Um, so jump back in and plan to join us in two weeks on the 24th. We are going to talk mobile apps on the 24th and whatever else other questions you have over the two-week break. So I know we just had a break over Christmas, so I'm sorry to go ahead and take one. But um, we are, so no break, or no Q&A next Monday night, and I will jump back in the following. So I hope you guys have a great two weeks until we talk again on Q&A time. But I will be back with CBS and Walgreens videos. And I've actually got a few extra fun videos that are going to pop up this week that people have specifically asked for how to use Southern Savers lists and use Southern Savers, uh, how to use Target Circle, how we save on produce and meat. So just individual videos that if you already know those things, they would be great to share just with other people. It's just the video. It's not a really long Q&A. So hopefully it'll help some folks too. So hope you guys have a great week and thanks for watching tonight. I hope it helps you get some new ideas for dinner and maybe take some stress off of what's for dinner. You guys have a great night.